Hi, it's Julie Kaylee again here with the Cyst2 Cell and I thought I would pop on with another live Q&A. Um, I did one yesterday if you didn't get a chance to watch it or if you did, um, that's wonderful. And you know, I got so many calls, texts and messages afterwards with feedback and people asking me uh, more questions. So I thought I would just pop on here to see it, um, if I could give you guys some more information. And the, by far, the number one question that I got is, uh, what do you think is gonna happen with the real estate market here? Um, can I wait one month to sell my house? Can I sell at the end of the year? Am I gonna miss this hot market? What do you think is going to happen and what should I do? So that is what we're going to talk about today. My predictions for real estate here in the short term over the next couple of months, as well as kind of the long term, the rest of this year and into next year. So I first want to say that, of course, nobody has a crystal ball. Um, so nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. And I think we've all come to learn and understand that after the year we just went through with 2021 and with this pandemic and, and really what we're still going through. But I want to give you um, kind of my take on it from a real estate professional's point of view and what we're kind of seeing on our end and some signs that you can look for that will start to show if the real estate market is softening, in my opinion. So right now, um, you keep hearing about how real estate is just super hot, lack of inventory, things are flying off the market. And that is 100% true almost across all price points and sort of all areas here in the Central Valley, but not just in the Central Valley, kind of across the nation, right? We're on this sort of housing crunch where things are just, um, there's not enough inventory, okay? And they're not building quick enough. Um, just so many things going on that is putting constriction on the inventory. And then we have this buyer demand that's really fueled by super low interest rates. But also, I think since everybody was sheltering at place um, at home for a certain amount of times, different amount of times across the country, uh, people started realizing that maybe the home they're in right now is not quite working for them. They want more space. They want less space. They want to move to a different area or they've got some financial situation that's going to allow them to upgrade or maybe they need to sell to downgrade and find a smaller place or um, even sell and rent. So all kinds of unpredictable things have happened that have changed people's circumstances or wanted to change people's circumstances. And that with the low interest rates is really helping um, fuel this demand for housing. In particular, in our area here in the Central Valley, we also have something else going on, and that is the migration from the Bay Area and areas that are just outside of the Central Valley. With this shift to work from home, we have seen a lot of people leave their high rent areas in the Bay Area, come down to the Valley, Manteca, Tracy, Ripon, Modesto, all the way down to Merced, right? And they can rent um, or buy for a fraction of what they were paying in the Bay Area. They're not necessarily have to commuting, they're telecommuting, um, and it's their chance to buy a home. So we are seeing first time buyers coming from the Bay Area. We're seeing investors come from the Bay Area. We're also seeing people who have sold their home in a Bay Area for a premium and coming down here and paying cash for a property. So all those different things are going on that are really helping to fuel our market as well. So if you're in this area, um, I think that's going to make total sense to you and you keep hearing about it. And I'm sure you know people that have come to our area from the Bay Area or maybe you did yourself. I was born and raised uh, here in Modesto and throughout up and down the Highway 99 is what I like to call it. Living in many of our uh, local communities. Um, so I'm from the area, but um, many of you probably came from other areas, including the Bay Area. So those are sort of the things that are contributing. So um, predictions. Um, I predict that in these next couple of months, the housing market is going to remain very tight. We still have very limited inventory. We still have very low interest rates. And we're not seeing a whole lot of those indicators that would show us that there's going to be a shift in the short term future. So what exactly are those indicators? 
Well, what I look for and what I tell people to look for whenever they ask me this question is a few things. Number one, days on the market. Right now, our days on the market is still very, very short. When we start seeing 90, 120, 150, you know, four, five, six months to sell a majority of properties, right, we have a major increase in days on the market. Right now, we're still very much um, way under that. 30 days less. Some homes sell in a day or two. So we're really seeing um, super short days on the market. So that's one thing to watch when the days on the market start going up. What happens also when the days on the market start increasing, that means homes are selling at a slower rate. So those people who are in a financial situation or in a hurry or need to relocate and have more motivation to sell, they can't necessarily wait that long term to get their home sold. So what happens is they start dropping their price. So when we see long days on the market or when we see days on the market increasing, when we start to see the price reductions coming, and I'm not just talking about one home reduces their prices. I'm talking kind of like across the board. The majority of homes are having price reductions. That is a signal that things are slowing down a little bit. So longer days on the market, price reductions. And then the third thing to watch is the overall inventory levels, okay? Longer days on the market, things start taking a little bit longer to sell. Price reductions, people are starting to lower their price, is going to equate to more homes being on the market. Then that also creates a little bit of fear with people who want to, um, who are planning on selling a little bit later, but want to hurry up and get their home on the market because they're afraid the market's going to shift. So we start to see more inventory. And right now we're desperate for more inventory, right? So I'm not talking about people just putting on their homes on the market as inventory. I'm talking about big, 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 unusual numbers of homes coming on the market. So those are really my, oh, and one more thing, one more thing, the notice of defaults starting to increase. Notice the default is when people are behind on their mortgages uh, and then that that uh, lender starts to take that process for foreclosing, foreclosing starts that process. Now right now that's a little wonky, right? Because we have all these moratoriums due to the pandemic. And last we heard those got extended through the summer here. So that one's gonna be a little bit harder to predict, but in a more normal time, that would be something that we would watch. We are seeing a little bit of an uptick on um, the NODs, as we call them, notices of default as well. Um, but it's a little too early to tell because um, a lot of those people are uh, should have equity and they may just be in a position where they're going to sell and not actually become a foreclosure or a, um, a default on the market. So those are the main key criteria that I look for when we start to see a softening or changing market. Uh, and so far, we really have not seen any of those things. Okay, we might see a price reduction here or there, but I'm talking broad based. And so far, we haven't seen all those. So for the short term, I think the market is going to continue to be um, ha like it has been this last six months to a year. Okay, and um, with that being said, we are on, gosh, almost mm, year eight of an increasing market. Um, really a little bit longer, but I'm, uh, I think year eight of like big percentage, double digits, year to year growth on prices. So we all know that real estate is cyclical. So what that means is we are due for a correction. OK, and with all these different dynamics going on, I think it is inevitable that the market is going to soften and prices are going to be a little more what I like to call realistic um, and uh, be I'm concerned about affordability in our area as well. And it yet remains to be unknown what the overall long term effects for this pandemic are going to be on our economy. But if you talk to most experts, um, we are going to catch up right with those economic repercussions from having things closed and people losing their jobs and, you know, really all those types of things. So when that's going to hit is a little unpredictable. I think personally, it's going to be towards the end of 2021 and into 2022 when we start to really see that correction 
coming in the market. So I know that's a lot of information and a lot of rambling, it's like almost 10 minutes here, but that, those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on the predictions and the market ahead of us. So uh, one thing we do know right now is the market is good. So if you're thinking of selling or you need to sell, um, now is definitely the time. I don't know that we have ever, ever, in the almost 20 years that I've been selling real estate, I don't know that we have ever had a better time to sell. So I hope you found that information helpful. Thanks for tuning in. Any questions, message, call, text me, um, and I'll be glad to help. Or if you have ideas for Q&A, shoot me a Facebook message, text, call, um, 209-253-8727 or through my Facebook page, and I will be happy to address those on tomorrow's Q&A. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching.